welcome to the fifth and the last video in the series, Data Warehousing Interview Questions and Answers. If you're new to this, then we're doing a series of interview questions and answers on data warehousing. This is a five video series in which in each video, we are discussing five interview questions. So let's get started with the five questions for today. The first question is what are aggregate tables? Now, so far we have seen facts and dimension tables. Let's say we have a fact table which has got daily transactional data. And now we want to create a report on that fact table and we want to show the monthly sum or the monthly sales happening in each of the months. So we want the monthly sales happening in January, monthly sales happening in uh, February and so on for the remaining month. So what is the approach that we can take in this case? One approach would be to create this query in the report editor itself. So we can write a query summing up all, uh, all the sales in that particular month and then uh, fetch the output in the report. But if the data is huge and because we have the processing constraints on report and we want the reports to be very fast, then another approach that can be taken is to create these aggregate tables. Now, aggregate tables are nothing but just aggregating all this data and storing them in another table. So you aggregate the table, the monthly data of your fact, transactional fact table, create another table, which is a monthly aggregate table and store that data in that table in your data warehouse. So now when you run that report, you do not need to go to your transactional fact table. You can just hit upon the aggregate table, just read that monthly data. So the data for January is this much and just display it in your report. So no calculations would be needed from the report perspective. That would make your report really fast. So these are aggregate tables. When you pre-store the aggregations, in a separate aggregate table in your data warehouse, which is physically a part of your data warehouse. So that would take up some space in your data warehouse, but your reports would be very fast. So you have to, as per your requirements, you have to choose whether you want to implement the aggregate tables or not. Okay, so the second question is, what is a factless fact table? So now let's take this example. You have your dim employee table, you have your dim day table, time table, and then you have a leave type table. Now, what is the purpose of this table? This table is called the fact leave table. So we are just tracking how many leaves were taken by which employee, when was that leave taken, what type of leave was it, whether it was a vacation, it was a sick day, or uh, it was actually a holiday. So we are tracking that kind of information. So now if you see the structure of the fact table, you will see that you just have your primary keys from other foreign tables, other dimension tables in your fact table as foreign keys. So you have your day ID, employee ID, leave ID and time ID, but you do not have any measure over here because you're not measuring anything. It's just an event based table. So you're just tracking which employee took which type of leave. You're not tracking anything else here. You're not measuring anything else here. It's just an event table. So another example of a factless fact is an attendance table. So you're just tracking your attendance. So this is also kind of attendance. You're tracking the leave here. So the opposite would be you are tracking the attendance that on which day, which student attended which course. So these are known as factless fact tables, which do not have any measure data as such. They only have foreign keys from the different dimension tables. But so they just store an event, the occurrence of an event. That kind of information is stored in a factless fact table. And this is how it looks like. So this is what is a factless fact table. Okay, moving on to the next question. What are junk dimensions? So junk dimensions, um, so let's take a look at the example first. So you have something called the order indicator key. You have the payment type description, payment type group, order type, 
commission credit indicator so you, as you can see you have some order related information you have some payment related information you again have some order type information you again have some commission credit indicator which is some other credit kind of information or commission kind of indicator of information so you can see that these are not exactly related to each other but they are small small descriptive uh, items which could have been created at separate dimensions as well so you could have created a payment type dimension you could have created an order type dimension you could have created a commission type dimension but is it worth creating these kind of dimensions so if they would if we would have created these dimensions they would have taken up a lot of space then you would have to maintain them so additional maintenance would have been required and so on additional joins to fetch the information from these tables and these would have been very small so a junk dimension is a concept that includes that merges all these small dimensions into one dimension table so all these small dimension tables which really do not grow over time and which have very little information all these dimensions are combined together as one dimension table so that it is easier to maintain it at the cost of some uh, redundancy of data which is okay because the data in the first place is less so these are known as junk dimensions so that makes the maintenance easier that makes the design easier uh, uh, easier for the queries or for data warehouse so that is why junk dimensions are useful in a data warehouse okay so the next question what are degenerate dimensions so, okay so degenerate dimensions basically are some descriptive values in your fact table okay so let's take a look at the example to understand what are degenerate dimension so here you can see and these are actually some fact tables from the adventure works database which sql server provides um, so this is a fact called the reseller sales and then there are some measures in this fact you can see unit price total product cost sales amount sales order quantity and then there's something called the order number so order number basically is not a measurable uh, column so you cannot aggregate on it it is basically a descriptive kind of attribute so one approach that could be taken is to create a dimension table that stores this order number but does that make sense it is an unnecessary dimension table that would make maintenance difficult and so on so order number though it is a descriptive kind of field it is not an id from any of the other dimension table it is not a measurable measure or of the fact table but still we would retain this into the fact table because there is no sense in making another dimension table with just the order number in it so we want to have this information of order number but we do not want to create another separate dimension table to store this though it is a descriptive or textual attribute in this table so the best approach in this scenario is to leave this descriptive column in the fact table itself and then this remains in the fact table but it is known as a degenerate dimension so degenerate dimension is not a dimension it is a dimensional attribute in a fact table so this is what is a degenerate dimension okay so coming to the last question for today and for this whole series what is a conform dimension so conform dimension is a dimension which can be used by all the fact tables so it's a common dimension basically so you can see in this example that there are two fact tables and these could have been separate data marts as well so this is a sales fact table so let's say it's a sales data mart and it is an inventory fact table so let's say this is an inventory uh, data mart but these three dimension tables time dimension product dimension and sub dimension both of these fact tables are uh, linked to these dimension tables so, so they are using the same dimension tables they also have their own specific dimension tables but for the time attributes product attributes and staff attributes they are using the same dimension tables so they are sharing this dimension table so when these tables are common across all the fact tables and all the data marks then these are known as conform dimensions and it is a best practice to have as many dimensions as possible as conform dimensions so your same kind of information for the same subject area should always reside in the same dimension table because the basic principle of data warehouse is be it being a single source of truth of data so 
your one kind of information or one subject area has to reside in one place so that there are not multiple copies created of that information because if multiple copies are created there might be inconsistencies in that information which is not what a data warehouse aims to have so these were the five questions for today and this was the fifth and the last video in the series. I hope you like the series. There are many more aspects in data warehousing and many more topics in data warehousing that can be covered and would we'll gradually plan them to cover in the future videos. But for now, I think these questions would really help you in appearing in any kind of data warehousing, ETL or reporting interviews. So if you like these videos, then please do like, share and comment on these videos. And please, please, please do not forget to subscribe to your YouTube channel for many more such videos. Thank you and have a good day.